stress and don't want. They are my friends. That's the topic we're going to discuss here today on Self Love Monday. How you guys doing? This is Ron Simplified Myers, author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook, Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. Now, I know a lot of us spend our lives trying to run from stress, trying to run from the things that we don't want, because we have, everything is perspective, as we always talk about. Um, I've heard Tony Robbins use the comment, he says, when things are going well, and I'm paraphrasing here, he says, but when things go well, people tend to party. But when things don't go the way we desire, people tend to ponder. Now, for me, it's kind of the same scenario I use when I talk about the fact that the difference between human beings and animals is the ability to pause, which is the pondering. We have the ability because animals live in a stimulus response world, which means things happen, they just respond. But we have that ability to pause, to stop, to think things through. Unfortunately, a lot of us live in that stimulus response world. Um, you watch a lot of the stuff that's going on now where uh, people want to fight each other over whether you got a mask on or not, or, you know, all the different, I'm not going to get into those topics, but we don't stop to think, you know, because I was sharing that with someone today, is we always look at things from just one perspective, depending on which side you're standing on the topic. But we never stop to st stop to think, pause, and look at the other side and see where are the other people coming from and not look at things as it's just the way that we believe it to be. In other words, I'm ending up on this topic anyway, but um, those that are hollering about wearing the mask instantly, the way it's being promoted is it means you don't care about other people and you're only about yourself. And that's what it means not to wear a mask. Well, if that's the side of the fence you're standing on, then of course you got to make the other people the bad people. What about the fact that maybe the people that don't want to wear a mask have a belief that to wear a mask is not good for my health? It's not safe for me. And so therefore, I'm putting my life and my health at jeopardy in wearing them. So in other words, they're not even, this has nothing to do with you. This has to do with why should I put my life in a position of, of, of risk? Because you think, you know what I'm saying? In other words, they believe wearing a mask is not good for you. But you automatically make them wrong and say it's because they don't care about me versus the other side. They're saying, well, you basically don't care about me because you want me to wear a mask. But this is, again, not, again, I, I, that's up to you where you stand on that topic. But I'm just saying... That's the, the, the difference in human beings and animals is animals are not going to sit there and have that kind of conversation. But as human beings, we have the ability to step back and have that conversation. And whenever we don't have those conversations is when we start to have chaos and we have division and we have the stuff that we're experiencing and all the different uh, things that are going on in our society right now. Because people are not stopping and pausing and say, let's act like human beings and hear each other's perspectives and being able to see where people are coming from versus taking a stance that my side is right and your side is actually wrong. But again, I kind of got off topic there a little bit, but it's still the same thing I wanted you to get that that's what makes us different as human beings is we do have that ability to stop, pause, and think things through. And that's really where the stress comes from, which this situation, again, falls into the stress category because a lot of people are getting stressed over this. Uh, a lot of people are, are, you know, taking, anyway, we'll leave that stuff alone. But the stress, and they don't like what's happening. Remember I said stress and don't want, because those two kind of go hand in hand to me. But the don't want is when we, same thing, we get to say, okay, what is the solution? Because we're, we're getting a result that we don't want. And that holds true in relation, all relationships, which we call communication. It's, it's when things are going away that we don't want them, can we pause, get myself out of the picture, and let me hear your perspective? And that's what causes relationships to work is when you can have that ability. 
but you have to do that also with yourself first. You got to be able to say, let me, and, and we do do that when things go the way we don't want them to. But I look at sports as an, another example. Um, you'll hear teams all the time talk about, especially teams that didn't win a championship, that maybe were expected to win a championship, or they went far into the playoffs and they thought they could go further and they didn't. But you'll hear all the lessons that people got from what we would, that the world tells you as a defeat, a failure and all that, or the stress that came from the loss or whatever, what it actually did, it gave them that ability to step back, pause, ponder, and say, what could I have done differently? Do I need to change my exercise program, my eating program, the plays that we ran, uh, the people that we had in certain situations? See, all this is because you got a result that you didn't want. Does that make sense? And we need those in our life because without them, how do you grow as an individual? You got to have that. Um, and I use examples, real simple ones, when you talk about something as simple as eating food on the floor. Somebody didn't want to sit on the floor, they created tables. Somebody didn't want to uh, take forever to get from one place to the other, they created cars. And you guys know where I'm going. We can go on and on with this, with everything. Nothing comes into existence without the don't want. And trust me, in the process of trying to accumulate or get to that point of what they do want, people usually have some stress along the way, either at the beginning, before they pondered and, and, and figured out what they can do to resolve it, along the process of trying to get the answer they were stressing out. But understand, that's why you hear it's all about the journey, because once you figure it out, you get the solution, and things work out the way you wanted them, or close to the way you wanted them, or better than the way you wanted them. When you get through, you just go, you celebrate for a little while. And, and that's what we miss as human beings. We don't understand. That's why, again, it's about the journey. Because once you get whatever it is that you think is the, the key, the solution to this journey, once you accomplish it, I don't care if you thought it was the big home. Once you get the big home, in a few months it becomes a home. Once you get that car, in a few months it'll be a car. You're always going to, I had someone, uh, matter of fact, we we're talking and, and um, they were talking about be, using Beyonce as an example because when she, her, her perfumes or whatever it has that she has out, clothing line, all that. And they're like, what does she want? All the money is like, she got everything. I mean, she's already wealthy. And I was like, haven't you realized, again, it's not about money. Uh, now, for some people, it's totally not about money. It's all about power. But I'm not saying that's her case or what she's trying to do or anything. But what I was sharing with them, as I said, what's she going to do? Just because you got money and she made it in singing or entertainment or, you know, however you describe it, what's she supposed to do now? Just sit at home and be like, well, okay, I done made all this money. I, I can't do touring or I'll, Maybe I don't want to do touring. I'd rather be a mom right now, whatever the case may be. So what should she do now? Just sit at home and just go, no, you're just an entertainer. See, those are the limits we put on people, unfortunately, in life. You know, I've seen people that are comedians. Like I look at Jamie Foxx, for example. I, I believe Jamie Foxx has a nice singing voice. But he's never really been accepted as a singer because everybody looks at him as a comedian. Um... He actually got in movies where they took him a little bit more serious, but for the most part, that was hard for a lot of people to adjust because they looked at him as a comedian. And that's the, that's the danger when people get discovered in a particular field is because we, we try to pigeonhole people and go, this is all you can do. So if you come in as a comedian, then that's what you are. You're a comedian. You can't go play sports. You can't do just like athletes. You can't try to play two professional sports. Why? Because... That means that you're not dedicated to one of those sports. And it's like, why? If you're dedicated to your body and your health and conditioning, then you're doing what it takes to play the sport. So how can you say, I'm not dedicated to either one? My body is what has to be in shape for those to play in those sports. Now, when I'm playing a particular sport, if I have to learn the plays and stuff, then I do it for that particular field. But the thing is, what I'm getting to... 
is you got to quit pigeonholing people and saying that this is who you are. And more importantly, we've got to quit doing that to ourselves. Um, that's why you guys have heard me use the example of because you're a doctor and you went to school for a doctor doesn't mean you have to stay a doctor. The moment that passion is gone, stress steps into your life. You really don't want to be there. Um, again, the don't want. It's time for you to move. Time for you to get out and not let the world tell you that that's who you are and you got to stay. No. But the stress and the don't want is opening you up to the opportunity and the possibility that there's something out there that you need to go after, something else to get that passion back, that desire about. So for most of us, because I think I'm very clear on the fact that understanding that the stress and the don't wants come in your life, those are cool. As long as you understand that you use those instead of allowing them to use you. But one of the ways that for a lot of people, you can address the stress and the don't want where it's not always in your life and always being in an uncomfortable position is to stop comparing. That's where most people are getting their stress from. And most people see the don't wants is because they're too busy using their life to compare it to other people. Stop. I even say that in relationships. The reason we have the conversations about my wife gained weight or she's not doing this or we're not sleeping in, as in, in bed as compared to other. If you stop comparing, if you and your partner were the only two people on a particular island, they would be the greatest individual in the world with no complaints. Why? Because you ain't got nobody to compare them to. If you can get out of the comparing business, and that's why, again, you guys hear me say the same thing, love is accepting people and things just the way they are. Now I'm just trying to find the person that's headed in the same direction as me. So if I quit comparing, if I've made the decision that this is my wife or the woman I want to be with, quit comparing her to other people, and you'll watch the stress in your life start to disappear. And the don't wants in your partner, those conflicts you're having, will start to disappear because you stop comparing them and wishing they were somewhere or something that they're not. So that's really, I want you guys, hopefully you got that stress, don't want, good for your life. Quit comparing is one of the major ways to address that. But when it does come into your life, accept it wholeheartedly, run with it and understand it's the thing that's going to drive you to enjoy this journey we call life. Because honestly, if everything went the way you wanted it, could you imagine how boring life will be? And, and there's a lot of people that sit back and go, I just wish it all. And I'm this is not Gary B a spiritual conversation. You guys know I don't go into that, but I always hear people talk about when the, and when the end comes, how beautiful we're not gonna have any any problems, nothing. Folks, I don't know what that's like, so I can't describe what it's like. But from a humanistic thought process, I just couldn't imagine no obstacles in life and thinking that that would be an exciting life. I think, you know, and, and one of the things that maybe is backfiring on me, I've always used to say, I don't want, I want to make it in this system as bad and as crazy as it is because I understand that those, the stress, the obstacles, and all those are the things that's going to make me ponder make me think and make me grow and i keep asking well you asked for all this and now with the stuff that's going on right now i'm like i don't know if i meant it to this extreme <laughs> but it's here so the thing is we're gonna deal with it we're gonna ponder we're not stressing but it is making a lot of pondering going on and a lot of pausing and a lot of thinking things through on how we can make this journey a lot better and stay uh uh enjoying life because as we know, if you guys, and again, you guys heard me say, don't sit here in front of your TV and listen to all this crazy stuff. Because you're going to need to listen to this video, other videos, every other video to talking about stress. Be, to get out of the stress. Because you're, you're, you're bombarding yourself with stuff that's not designed to help you ponder to move forward. It's to ponder and get you down and depressed. 
and get you to a point where you think the world is coming to an end and you stop trusting your neighbors and your friends and all that. And folks, it's not a healthy place to be. The pondering is to look for a solution to make things better. Not a pondering on the destruction, which is what unfortunately we're seeing a lot of. So again, understand stress. And I got a little off there, but you guys know I got some, some, some serious thought process on all those things. Um, but that's not the topics of today. So but my main objective for this conversation is for you to take the stress, ponder, think things through, understand it's all there for a reason. Everything that happens, again, understand life happens for you, not to you. And if you take that one concept and understand that everything happens for a reason, it's all about me taking it in and saying, okay, what is it here presenting for me to get out of this? If you live that life, stress would become your friend. And the same thing with the don't want, because all both of them just open you up to say, okay, what is possible in order to resolve what it is that I don't like and that I'm stressing about? And as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong, it is my opinion. For those of you who we talk about relationships, I look forward to talking to you on Thursday. We'll talk about relationship Thursday. For those of you who are back on the Self Love Monday, I look forward to getting back with you on Monday. Folks, understand that stress and stuff. It's all a part of the journey. Get, don't take that as a negative because if you don't, you will start again how this ties into the self-love is because if you understand and get that stress right and you get all the uh, um, the don't wants right, you have no choice but to love you. So again, remember, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. And I look forward to talking to you guys soon. You take care and enjoy the journey. Take care. Bye-bye.